This is ABC 7 News at 6. Your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Hello and welcome. I'm Scott Dennis and I'm Haley Wilkes. Thank you for joining us. Topping our news tonight after years of sitting open, the city has finally approved a mixed use development for the former Quay property. Property sits at the intersection of US 41 and Fruitville Road in Sarasota. Very high, highly desirable location. ABC 7's Kate Flexer joins us live from there tonight with more on the story. Kate. Thanks, guys. Just across the street behind me is that Quay development. And over the years, it's gained its share of fans and, of course, critics. It's the last piece of open bayfront property in Sarasota and perhaps one of the most valuable on Florida's southwest coast. But for years, it sat vacant and untouched until now. I was excited because we've had um, a huge chunk of land that has um, lied fallow. Um, in the city and nobody's been able to access it. On Monday, the Sarasota City Commission approved a $1 billion proposal to build a mixed-use development from Greenpoint communities. The agreement allows for up to 695 condos, 175 hotel rooms, as well as retail and office space with buildings up to 18 stories high. It's part of a larger plan to transform the bayfront over the next several years. The city is on a hot streak and we have a lot of great development coming online. For Sarasota resident Gabriel Hammond, it's part of the city realizing its full potential. But he says resistance to that growth threatens to stop that momentum and make Sarasota unappealing to developers. I think as a city we have to be careful to have a balanced, thoughtful discussion um, that's not driving away investment into the urban core. But for Jerry Swarmstead, who has lived in Sarasota since 1967, the fear is losing even more of what she loves about Sarasota. I recognize that the property will be developed, and but we just don't want it overdeveloped and we don't want it to overwhelm the area. Her biggest worry is that additional traffic and influx of new residents into the downtown area. We need it to be within reason. And I think too many 18-story buildings is not reasonable. There's a, a sweet spot in there, and that's hard to find. Once it's all underway, they expect construction will take about seven years. Reporting live in Sarasota, Kate Flexter, ABC7, your Suncoast News. Thank you, Kate. President Obama has just a few weeks left in office, and one of his last stops is right here in Florida. President giving his last national security speech in office. ABC 7's Alan Cohn joins us now live from MacDill Air Force Base in Tampa with more. Alan. Scott, just a reminder, MacDill Air Force Base is not only the home of U.S. Central Command, it is also the home of Special Operations Command, you know, the folks that got Osama bin Laden. The president came here not only to thank the incredibly brave men and women who are here, but also to throw down a marker to the next administration, specifically that you can defeat terrorism without defeating or compromising the nation's ideals. It was billed as the president's last major speech on the nation's strategy in the war against terrorism. In a hangar full of military personnel, the president says ISIS has been decimated, it has lost territory, and is on the run. But he warned the nation against a state of perpetual war. He called on Congress to pass a new authorization to specifically go after ISIS. In not so many words, he cautioned the up incoming Trump administration about using torture as well as referring to the battle as a war against Islam. We are fighting terrorists who claim to fight on behalf of Islam. But they do not speak for over a billion Muslims around the world. And they do not speak for American Muslims, including many who wear the uniform of the United States of America's military. If we stigmatize good patriotic Muslims, that just feeds the terrorist narrative. It fuels the same false grievances that they use to motivate people to kill. If we act like this is a war between the United States and Islam, we're not just going to lose more Americans to terrorist attacks, but we'll also lose sight of the very principles we claim to defend. The president also once again called for the closing of Gitmo, a promise that he made when he entered office eight years ago 
but was never able to fulfill. We'll have more on the president's visit to Mattel Air Force Base, Air Force Base, coming up on ABC 7 at 7 in just about an hour. Reporting live from Mattel Air Force Base, Alan Cohn, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. Thank you, Alan. All right, let's get a check on our weather now. We had a, kind of an eventful day, some rain that we haven't seen in a while. Here's Bob Harrigan with more. Yeah, it was nice to hear the rumble of thunder, too. Some thunderstorms moving on through. And good news, no severe weather around today. Uh, the big storms were to the north of us, although we did have some pretty heavy downpours at times. Rain, uh, rainfall estimates up to two, two and a half inches of rainfall in parts of Manatee County. 74 right now. The winds have shifted now to the west at 8, and that's a good sign indicating that we have seen the drier air and cooler air start to slice in through here. It's not going to be cold, though. Uh, we're going to see temperatures still slightly above average. One thing you will notice, though, lower humidity values tomorrow midday. Uh, we will also see the potential for fog forming. That fog will be rather thick in some areas tomorrow morning, especially right around drive time. That could be rather thick in some patchy areas. The low pressure area that's driving this front continues to move off toward New York, New York, and you can see that frontal boundary exists right in through central Florida. That front will move on through. And then another one, a stronger one, is on the way. It'll be here late Thursday. Talk more about that in just a few minutes. Back to you. All right, Bob, thank you. An Englewood woman is behind bars following a claimed domestic dispute last month. Sarasota County Sheriff's Office says Jeannie Martelli was claimed that she shot her boyfriend because he was beating her during a dispute. He was taken to the hospital and denied any physical altercation with Martelli, telling detectives she simply shot him for no reason. She was arrested today and charged with aggravated battery with a firearm. Dozens of parents, students, and teachers packed the Sarasota County School Board meeting this afternoon. At issue, whether to start the school year a week earlier so as to end the first semester before winter break. And there were plenty of speakers from both sides. ABC 7's Ray Collins is just back from that meeting and joins us with an update. Ray. Haley, a very emotional issue the past few months here in Sarasota County. And today was the vote. Many parents sat side by side with stickers that said opposed on their clothing. So after a series of comments from both sides, the board voted 5-0 to start a week early, August 14th, and end December 22nd. Previously, the semester didn't end until early January. Now, I spoke with one of the opponents about why she didn't want the semester to end before the break, and Jennifer Mason says studying for exams in December is difficult for her kids. Devil's advocate would say, wouldn't you want to button up the first semester before the end of the year? Yes, if you want your grades to go down. It's that simple? One would think when you're going to cram, I mean, kids are already tuned out. My two are already tuned out. They're, the Christmas spirit's running high and the studying's running low. Not a good combination when you're going to count these, these tests for as highly as they count. Other opponents said the earlier start date would interfere with summer vacations. But again, in the end, the board voted 5-0 to start the fall semester in mid-August and end in late December. More tonight at 11. Back to you. Also, awesome. you start earlier, you get out earlier at That's the end of the school true. year. That's so true, and you can is. leave for Christmas break with it all behind you. That's right. Yeah. So to come in your Suncoast News, as downtown Sarasota grows and develops, so does the art that makes the city unique. And later, just weeks after Amendment 2 passes in the state, another company is authorized to distribute medical marijuana to patients. The official Suncoast Storm Team at ABC7. We're here for you. Black Friday's biggest deals are still here. That's right, the Black Friday sales event is going strong at Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Sarasota. Ram trucks are built tough enough to help you conquer whatever the day may throw your way with all the technology and comfort you'd find in a luxury vehicle. Right now, get over 20% off. That's up to $15,000 off a new Ram 1500. Better prices, bigger selection. Go to Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Sarasota. So many possibilities worth exploring. Minnesota flooring. Looking for carpet? Look no further. Minnesota flooring has smart strand carpet as low as $1.79 per square foot. Installed, no add ons or extras. Unbelievable? Minnesota flooring can have in stock carpet installed in your home in 48 hours for as low as $1.99 per square foot. Don't miss these prices. Visit Minnesota flooring today. Types of timber, cuts of meat, cooking times, temperatures, rubs, seasoning, sauces. You name it, they know it. That's what makes them who they are, Sonny's Pitmasters, and proud of it. Come get some baby back ribs at Sonny's Barbecue. On their own or paired with favorites like jalapeno cheddar hotlings, pulled or sliced pork, plus two sides and bread. 
Sonny's on his barbecue. Local pit masters in 68. Hi, I'm Chef Judy. Every Wednesday morning, I'll be with the chefs at the Publix Aprons Cooking School serving up the most wonderful dishes. Watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday on ABC 7's Good Morning Suncoast. Are you considering joint replacement or revision surgery? Consider this. Dr. Edward Stolarski has performed thousands of successful joint replacement procedures and trained surgeons from all over the world. Using advanced technologies, Dr. Stolarski is able to perform some of the most complex surgeries. I wish I knew about Dr. Stolarski much sooner. After the surgery, I don't have any pain. It's like I've got a 16-year-old hip. My name's Ed Stolarski. What I really do is I give people back their life. Schedule a consultation today. They're coming from Tampa, Fort Myers, even Orlando. They're coming from everywhere for the Sarasota Ford Promise. Our promise means a new car you'll love. If not, return it for one you do. At Sarasota Ford, we promise live market pricing. We monitor national pricing on our entire inventory so you get the best deal. In fact, we guarantee it. Bring us any competitor's ad and we'll beat it by at least $1,000. That's why they're coming from everywhere to Sarasota Ford, where 41 meets 301. SarasotaFord.com. Sarasota has long been known for the arts. And now the effort to solidify that title is being made, this time with visual artwork. ABC 7's Bobeth Yates joins us now with more on the story tonight. Bobeth? Yes, from plays and musical performances to now public art. The city of Sarasota voting to approve yet another statue for the area. Feast your eyes on what's soon to be the newest addition to the area's art portfolio. The piece is a markup of a statue to be created by local artist Jorge Blanco and will be erected at the intersection of Ringling Boulevard and Orange Avenue. So if we're going to be beautifying our community with roundabouts and controlling traffic, why not make them really beautiful and include uh, iconic public art pieces. Sarasota commissioners voted in favor of erecting the statue at a cost of $150,000. Jim Shirley, the executive director of the Arts and Cultural Alliance, the organization behind the project, says commissioners' votes will help ensure that as the community grows, it does not lose its appeal. We need to be mindful of the fact that not only do we want to add buildings, but we also need to continue to beautify our city and our community while we're doing that. And public art is certainly one of the best ways. But not everyone agrees with the selection. I love art. Everybody in Sarasota, I think, loves art. But this thing is, is ugly, just plain ugly. Dan Lobeck with Control Growth Now, a watchdog organization that aims to police local developments, says the statue, which is supposed to represent arts in Sarasota by symbolizing the area's focus on music, theater, and dance, is a poor representation. It looks like an erector set hangover. It's visually cacophonous. And Lobeck says the public should have been involved in the final decision. There needs to be public workshops about these things because they're forever. And when you have something this ugly at the intersection of two major roads that are people going to have to see all the time, it's just in bad taste. I think everybody is entitled to their own opinion. That type of situation, I don't like this or I don't like that, is really what art is all about. It's, it's an individual choice, it's an individual idea of what art is, what beauty is. Now, Shirley adds his organization chose the piece from 163 entries submitted from artists around the country. And after narrowing down the selection from to just three, they voted on Jorge Blanco's statue. Back to you. Thank you, Bobeth. Art is one of those things that it's open to interpretation. Some people love it, some people not so much. Right. Yeah, as we heard. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> There are many choices when it comes to AC companies. Our advice? Choose a company that performs employee background checks and is licensed with top manufacturers like Daikin. Daikin offers a 12-year parts and labor limited warranty. For better comfort and value, call Elite Heating and Air. Uh, they, they care. They, they take the time to understand you, take the time to understand your case. There's no better satisfaction to me than to see a client who is happy because of the job we've done for them. It's really actually very comforting to know that there's someone that you've heard of and you're getting recommendations about that you can turn to when you have a problem. I felt like I had a partner in this and uh, he was going to be by my side. They say good things come to those that wait. Well, you've waited long enough. You deserve to feel fabulous in your fashionable new Fiat 500X from Alfa Romeo Fiat in Sarasota. Boldly innovative, seductively stylish. 
Fiat gives you everything you'd expect from a capable utility vehicle, like a spacious interior and advanced safety systems, designed and built like a sexy little sportster. Don't wait any longer. You deserve to feel fabulous. Get a new Fiat at Alfa Romeo Fiat of Sarasota. Today, everyone is looking for carpeting that lasts longer. G. Freed has you covered with Karistan. With a legacy of quality and integrity, we provide you with a huge selection of Karistan carpets with exclusive lifetime limited warranties. All installed by our highly skilled, highly knowledgeable team. Come ask us why Karistan is the best and most durable. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. The official salon of ABC7. caregiver for someone you love is truly a blessing, but sometimes you can lose a part of yourself. To be your best, for them and for you, it's important to have time to be able to recharge your batteries. When you call Tidewell Hospice, they can give you a chance to do just that, and with the peace of mind of knowing your loved one is in the very best hands. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. Well, here's a look at your weather headlines coming up here. The uh, first front is through, and we're going to see some fog forming overnight. And then another front is to move through late Thursday, and that's going to be just a short cool down, though. So we are going to need some jackets and sweaters around uh, by Friday and into early Saturday. And then after that, things look to be a little bit better. Now, that cold front is now moving through the area. It brought with it some showers, a few thunderstorms, and some moderate to heavy rainfall at times for some places. Weather observer in Inglewood, though, saying that he only had two, ten, two one hundredths of an inch of rainfall uh, earlier today and lesser amounts as you push into some areas down in the south Sarasota County. But the heavy rain is over now, and we still have the chance for a light shower here or two as the actual drier and cooler air starts to settle in. It's not going to be a real big drop in temperatures, though, so don't expect that over the next uh, couple of days. We will see that stronger cold front move through as that low pressure area heads off to the east. Rainfall estimates from the Doppler radar site, pretty impressive in Manatee County and North Sarasota, right there near the airport, too. Uh, Lakewood Ranch or just to the west thereof near Terra and State Road 70, some moderate heavy rainfall near uh, Palm Air all the way down at the University Park. Uh, 2.5 inches, now that's an estimate now from the Doppler radar site. Also near Onico and near Bradenton, uh, right down, downtown Bradenton. Lesser amounts, so out in uh, Holmes Beach as well as in Anna Maria. I had one uh, weather gauge out there uh, reporting just one one hundredth of an inch of rainfall, a tenth of an inch there in northwest Bradenton and lesser amounts I mentioned down south in South Sarasota County. The forecast tonight, staying pretty mild up to 11 o'clock, 71 degrees, just a few clouds around. And currently at the Sarasota Bradenton Airport, we have partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies. 74, winds have switched now to a westerly direction. And with that in mind, uh, we may see a little bit of fog forming overnight. Winds uh, will stay out of the west and northwest. The pressure 29.94 inches, and that is on the rise. So high pressure building back in. The high today was 80 despite the clouds around and rainfall. We still warm to 80. 75 is our normal high. Uh, we'll see normal temperatures on Thursday and then below normal temperatures on Friday. Well, the airport getting over an inch of rainfall, and that's uh, pretty good for the month now. We're well above average, and looks like uh, we will see another chance of some showers come late Thursday and Friday with the next front. Not as much rainfall, but we'll still see some showers around. And the hourly forecast is calling for partly cloudy skies, 70s to mid 70s, running in through much of the day. No threat of any rainfall. As I mentioned, there's a slight chance for a sprinkler or two through this evening. Behind the front, some slightly drier air will settle in for just about a day. Then we'll start to moisten up just a little bit. Not enough to produce a lot of widespread rainfall with the next cold front. That front kind of fades away to our south. We will see some fog around tomorrow morning. Fog burning off, revealing partly cloudy skies. And then the front kind of works its way back northward as a warm front as the secondary front starts to uh, gather strength and a low pressure area uh, swings another stronger cold front away. But this is that dry air swath that you see 
over much of Florida now. That is heading our way. Temperatures, well, the Arctic air mass is moving in. Single digits in North Dakota right now. It's 25 in Denver, 11 in Billings. Temperatures in the 30s and 40s in Cleveland, Detroit, Chicago now at 33 degrees, St. Louis at 40 degrees and 40 in Boston. For boaters, look for the fog in the morning, otherwise partly cloudy. Seas running two to four feet with a light chop on the bays and inland waters. Winds will be out of the north at around 10 knots. And the UV index will be a 7. Uh, water temperature at 73. And beaches will see a high right around 76 degrees. Upcoming tides in just a few minutes now. In fact, happening right now. The low tide will be at 1232. Tonight, a few evening sprinkles, if you will. Still possible, otherwise partly cloudy. Some fog developing late tonight. And then... Uh, tomorrow looks to be okay. The morning fog around and we'll see uh, partly cloudy skies, a high of 77 degrees. And the extended forecast is calling for uh, the cooler air to move on in uh, and for just about 36 hours. A chance for showers late Thursday into Friday morning and then much cooler on Friday and Saturday. We'll be right back after this. Hi, I'm Linda Carson. Coming up, we're going to introduce you to an amazing Suncoast woman who makes ancient things come alive again. First out the door when it matters most. And this month, Made in America is back. 200 reports and counting. He asks, he listens. When American jobs are on the line, he's right there. Thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast. When caring for my wife alone became too much for me, I called my long-term care insurance company to get help from granny nannies. Now the most wonderful nurses help me with her care. A helping hand and a gentle heart. Whether you're a homeowner looking for a professional installation or a contractor looking for top quality products, Sarasota Glass & Mirror can meet your every need. For 42 years, Sarasota Glass & Mirror has been the area's premier supplier and installer of quality glass products for your home or business. As an authorized PGT Wingard dealer, we know how to protect your home. With everything from the PGT Wingard impact-resistant windows and doors to shower enclosures and decorative mirrors, the Sarasota Glass & Mirror team has the knowledge to tackle any project. You've seen me roll for 100 Gs, but I got a little more than dough riding on this one. They call you Lady Luck. But there is room for doubt. At times you have a very unladylike way of running out. And so the best that I can do is pray. <laughs> Luck be a lady tonight. This holiday season, give the greatest gifts of all, safety and peace of mind. Subaru offers more 2016 IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus winners than any other brand. And now during the Subaru Share the Love event, you can lease the most award-winning small SUV on the planet, a new 2017 Subaru Forester for just $209 a month. Or get 0% financing. Get more for your money. Go to Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. Christmas Traditions by LuxArt Silks, where more is merrier. Make your holidays sparkle with style. Browse our amazing showroom, cute collectible cottages, and beautiful Christmas displays. Find the inspiration, selection, and quality you need to deck the halls merry and bright. Christmas Traditions also features the area's largest selection of quality pre-lit Christmas trees. Every size, shape, and color, and plenty of decorations to make your home shine for the holidays. Christmas Traditions by LuxArt Silks, where more is merrier. Visit us on New 301, just a quarter mile north of University Parkway. Mom needed more care than we could provide, so we called Granny Nannies. She now has around-the-clock caregivers, and we have peace of mind. Thanks to them, she's where she belongs, at home. A helping hand and a gentle heart. Well, we have some world-renowned people here on the Sun Coast who could live anywhere in the world that they want. But after much research, they chose to live right here. ABC 7's Linda Carson introduces us to such a lady in today's amazing Sun Coast woman. Linda. When Sonia Jordan Mowry and her husband Frank decided to move their studio to a warmer climate, they wanted a small town with an international flair. They chose Venice and they love their new home. Sonia Jordan Mowry is an internationally renowned book and paper conservator. A book and paper conservators are responsible for salvaging, restoring, bringing back to life documents and artifacts that are primarily composed of 
paper. Her husband is also a world famous book and paper conservator and they work side by side. They moved to Venice about a year ago. We wanted to relocate to a very warm climate, but a place where there was some history and some culture that would keep us sort of engaged with the community. What a career she's had. I started my uh, first position as a book and paper conservator uh, at the University of Notre Dame. I actually started as a rare books librarian. She started the first conservation lab there, then after 17 years moved to the Chicago Public Library. Where I was head of special collections archives and conservation and exhibitions. Next up, John Hopkins as head of conservations. I started what's called Heritage Science for Conservation, which is the first uh, science lab inside of an academic institution. Sonia started life a world away. My parents met in Budapest, Hungary, where my father was a soccer coach there, and my mother was a translator. After she was born, they escaped to Canada. Then her dad took a soccer coaching job with the Dallas Tornadoes. She grew up surrounded by books and culture. Lots of history. Uh, it, was an, an, it was in my blood from the day I could breathe. She started her career path in college. I studied medieval philosophy and philosophy of science, and I worked with older books, primarily because I was interested in the content. But um, eventually I came to fall in love with the artifacts. She loves restoring the books and artifacts that come to her. They come to you in such need, mm -hmm. and then you see them transformed into a functional and beautiful item and you feel happy that you've saved something. And her life lesson? Study history. I thrive on the fact that I know that I got here because of all of the events that happened before me. And it gives you better self-understanding and better understanding of others around you. And it makes you appreciate history in the moment as well. As soon as she moved here, Sonia volunteered with the Venice Museum and Archives. Now, the oldest thing she has ever restored was from 1423. The oldest thing her husband has restored was from the year 640. Oh Some old goodness. things lying around in their studio. 640? <laughs> yes. Wow. That was before I was born. Was it? I didn't know that one. <laughs> that was good.